Now, thanks to 90 Mile Wines and Anytime Fitness Glenelg, it's Chewing the Fat with Bevan Jones. G'day and welcome to another edition of Chewing the Fat. Bebo here today joined by a star of the future from the Adelaide Crows. He's played eight games for the Crows, made his debut last year in round 23 against Carlton, kicked a goal on debut as well and they had a 104 point win. Elliot Himmelberg, great to have you on Chewing the Fat mate. Thanks Bebo, nice to meet you. You too, um, you're, you're born from in, in uh, Wagga Wagga of course and um, talk us through your journey there and uh, how you became an AFL player. Yeah, so Wagga Wagga traditionally known as uh, a place that produces a fair few athletes in pretty much any sport. Um, that was pretty cool, just being around sport. Uh, family was really involved in sport, so it was, um, it was a really good upbringing, I think. A lot of good people, uh, a lot of lifelong friends uh, and stuff like that, so that was, yeah, awesome. Well, the great Wayne Carey is from Wagga Wagga. Did you uh, idolise him growing up as a kid, or was he a little bit before your time? To touch before, but uh, coming like sort of these days, as I got older, you know, you, you begin to learn about him. Him, uh, Paul Kelly, blokes like that, yeah. Um, it's not, not uh, idolising as I was coming through, but now sort of understanding what they were, yeah. And how good he was and, and that yeah, sort of thing absolutely. as well. Yeah, and uh, let's talk about your debut last year, I mentioned before, you won by 104 points and you kicked a sausage roll within the first 20 minutes of the game. Um, what a thrill that must have been, not only to kick that goal, but to make your debut in front of you know, all your friends and family. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was pretty cool. Um, I had a few mates uh, come up from Wagga, so for them to be a part of it, I guess, because they were sort of at uh, the beginning of, of it all, so to get them to come up and uh, bring them to that was, was awesome. Same with family, so yeah. And your brother Harry, he's doing some pretty good things over there at the Giants. Um, growing up, did you have quite a few uh, backyard cricket games and basketball games with him? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, cricket, rugby, uh, tennis, pretty much everything. It was um, it was pretty good. We had a really good setup with the tennis court and uh, basketball hoop, so it was pretty sweet. And you keep in touch with him still and trying to get him to come across to the Crows. He's having a pretty good year at the Giants. Yeah, I always sort of joke about that in the off-season with him, but uh, he's just signed on for a fair bit with Sydney, so it might yep. have to work out a trade or something. And uh, the season itself this year for the Crows, you started really well in the in the seniors. Um, now, sort of, unfortunately, towards the end of the season, um, you know, it's a bit of you know up in the up in the air in terms of the finals. But the sample side's going really well. You, you're going to be playing finals there and finish third, or you're sitting in third at the moment. So, um, have you seen both seasons so far, Elliot? Yeah, yeah, pretty contrasting. Like you said, I uh, got the opportunity a bit earlier this year, so it was pretty. Um, pretty interesting and then obviously coming in and out of the side a couple of times it's that's the realization you get to uh, this level so before you really submit yourself it's been a different year um, but going back and playing Sanford we're uh, most likely to be a top three side uh, by the end come finals so it's been really exciting to go back and play good footy there as well. And the, the, the Crows team, the senior side, where do you think it's, um, I guess, uh, going from sort of starting the year so well to where you guys are on the ladder, what do you think it's, obviously the injuries have had a bit of, a, bit of effect to it, but um, what else has sort of been that, the issues there that's maybe affected you guys? Yeah, look, we're, we're always sort of trying to adjust on the fly. It's just been, uh, things just haven't gone our way this year, like you said, a couple of injuries at the wrong times. Um, you know, a fair few players put their hand up and, and coaches, but, you know, I think it, it's just important we as a collective try and finish the year off strong, play a good game against Bulldogs, um, just play our way and, and, you know, obviously it's up in the air with finals, we're, we're, we're sort of finger crossing a bit, but, um, you know, we feel like at the start of the year we would deserve to play finals and we could prove it by the end. Yeah, that's right. It's all up in here with, uh, with those other results, isn't it? So, and you're known as a Big Easy. Um, who came up with that nickname, or is that something that's come from Wagga Wagga? Um, nah, it's it come from here. Probably Tex. He's usually the one that gives you the nicknames early on, and uh, you know, 
people pick and choose. He comes up with a lot, not probably the quality, but um, yeah, probably just Big E comes easy. Uh, it's, there's not much to it, yeah. Yeah, and I've heard that you're the man that um, controls the music and stuff before the games, and you like a bit of doof doof. <laughs> Tell yeah. us more about this. Oh, that's, I caught a bit of flack for that, but I, I sort of enjoy everything. Um, that's just my personal uh, pre-game setup, so uh, it's not for everyone, I guess. Uh, but yeah, I think it's, um, it's not too bad. And we've heard that Don Pike's a pretty handy golfer. Have you had a, a crack at him at all on the golf course? Or? No, I haven't. I, uh, I'm, I'm a very here and there golfer. It's, it's got to depend on a lot of things for me to go and play around. But um, no, yeah, obviously he's off scratch. So um, I'll probably have to get my handicap down before I get to have a go with him. Yeah, it's smart. It's smart, man. Yeah. Wouldn't want to embarrass myself. <laughs> exactly. And you mentioned before Tex, um, he's known as being a bit of a practical joker. Um, who are some of the other boys there that like to play a practical joker? Or maybe you might you know, like to play a few of your teammates yourself, perhaps. Um, everyone has their cracks here and there. Uh, Rory Atkins, from all reports, might have settled down a bit, but he's uh, he was a keen uh, prankster back in the day, I think. Okay. And, and Texan, has he played in your new as well? Or? Um, I think so. I, I had my car filled up with... You know the little foam beads that you put in, in bean bags? Bean bags. <laughs> that, that's happened to me before. I th I'm pretty sure he was behind it, but I'm, I'm unsure, yeah. You have to get him back. So. Oh, no, yeah. yeah. Well, I can't until I prove it was him. Oh, okay. That's a, yeah, no, fair enough. Well, Elliot, we're going to do something called 90 Seconds Thanks to 90 Miles. So one of our sponsors, 90 Mile Wines, shout out to them just up in Galway. Um, so I'm going to ask you a series of questions in 90 seconds. So here we go. Your favourite food? Uh, chicken and vegetables, Chinese. Favourite drink? Coke, Cola. Coke, nice. Um, Favourite holiday destination? Um, oh, I haven't been there, but probably Mount Rice. Good choice. Uh, Favourite movie? Um, this year, Us. Us? Us, yeah. yeah. Jordan Peele film, it's very good. Good choice. Uh, in terms of um, summer or winter, which is your preferred choice? Summer. Yep. Uh, pie with sauce or without? With, yeah. Farming gin and iced coffee, you're a fan or not a fan? Um, I'm a fan, but not often. No, yeah. yeah. Not good for you? I don't, I don't go out of my way to get it, but yeah. Yeah, no, fair enough. Um, in terms of your teammates, uh, funniest teammate and why? Um, oh, Paul Seedsman probably just gets it. Uh, Due to quality, uh, quantity over quality, I guess. <laughs> okay. And the biggest pest at the club? Um, probably Tex. I'd say. Texan. Yeah. And outside interests um, other than playing footy? Um, yeah, just sports in general, I guess. Uh, I watch, watch a lot of movies. Um, yeah, pretty much those two, I guess. And the 2019 Brownlee medalist? Um, I'd say Patrick Cripps. Good choice. Elliot Hilberg, Big Easy, it's been a pleasure yeah, having you on Chewing yeah, the Fat. Absolutely. Thanks so much to Kira Lee and all the crows for organising today and uh, all the very best the rest of the season with obviously this weekend uh, and also the SANFL team as well. Thank you. Thank you. It's been fun. Cheers.